And so we say together. In the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. O Lord our God, we thank you for this new day, for the opportunities it offers us to praise and worship your holy name. We gather a thankful people, your mercies are new each morning and your faithfulness ever sustaining us all. We come in awe of all that you have done, all that you are doing and all that you will do. You are an unchangeable God. Yesterday, today and forever, you are the same Lord. This morning we offer our hearts to you. In silence we bring our mistakes, our failings, our shortcomings to the foot of your cross. Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are sorry. We trust in your forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Our hearts are ready to receive your life-giving spirit anew today. Life-giving God, may you gift us the fruit of your spirit in this season together. May we love more radically, dwell in your joy, rest in your presence. Wait patiently on your words and purpose for us and others. Strive always to bless others with your kindness. Give freely of what we have in our generosity. Be faithful to our God and God's people. Live with a fierce and justice fueled gentleness and have the self-control to resist all which harms us, others and God's world. Amen. Amen. So today we are diving into the lectionary with a very important question um, coming out of the reading mm. today. The reading is from Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 18. Once when Jesus was praying alone with only the disciples near him, he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Messiah of God. And so as we begin, just imagine Jesus is asking you that question, but who do you say that I am? And maybe Mm. share in the comments how you would have responded to that if you were Peter in that situation. Who do you say that God is? It's a huge question, mm. isn't it? Who do you think Jesus is? I mean, there's so many different answers that I think I've heard to this over the years um, from all kinds of different people. And and it covers a whole range of things as well. Even, even if you just take positive answers that people have given, there's such a wide range to how people interpret and talk about Jesus. Um, but it's such a crucial question mm. at the centre of, of our faith, really, the centre of all that we kind of, we look to it really matters who we say Mm. Jesus is I think and so it'll be really interesting to see what people come up with yeah just pausing hoping that someone's gonna say in the comments brilliant we have one someone says my brother Mm. thank you Carrie wonderful immediately think of the song as the deer pants for the water I think it is you're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king yeah Mm. yeah I love you more than any other, mm. so much more than anything. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, Judith says he is the son of God and made in his image. Christine, my saviour. Susan says redeemer. Brilliant. This this feels like one of those um, one of those morning prayers where we're going to have to create one of those wordle things mm. afterwards. Put all of these words into a document, upload them and see what it comes out yeah. with and what we say about Jesus. But we do need more than four of you. Um, to give us an answer to make that happen. Um, But yeah, I think what I really like about this reading as well, still avoiding what we might say about the answer, but is is the way in which kind of Jesus pushes them. Um, Because it's quite easy, I think, sometimes to hear what other people say about Jesus, take other people's faith, take other people's kind of God stories and relationships, and just kind of repeat what we've heard elsewhere mm. and say well th- this person talked about Jesus in this way so, that, so that's that is who Jesus must be 
Um, but here Jesus pushes the disciples beyond that. Starts there by thinking about what are the crowd? Who, who do the crowd say I am? But then pushes them saying, well, actually, yeah, but who do you say that I am? And making it about what that personal understanding mm. is, making mm. that faith about actually that relationship between Jesus and in this case, Peter <clears throat> being the one that really matters, not Peter yeah. just repeating what others yeah. have said. Yeah, it's about that one to one intimate relationship, isn't it? That experience and encounter for yourself, not just through others. Mm. And we've had a few more words yeah. uh, Savior, again, friend, Savior of the world. Um, Christ is a light to my path, my strong arm lifting me. Um, Saviour, uh, my friend, role model. Ooh, role model, that's a good one. Mm, mm. Brilliant. Um, something that this reading always kind of brings me up and, and makes me remember, and it's a helpful reminder, I think, um, that, that sense of, of who do people think Jesus is through the way that we live our lives and we mm. be together. Um, and I think maybe because we were doing safeguarding on Monday, so obviously that's kind of in the forefront of, of our minds, actually. But but just that reminder that the way that the church behaves and the way that the church uh, responds, interacts, engages with, with community, with, with outsiders, with other people, uh, the way that church behave with, with each other within, within the building and within its fellowship and its members, um, the way that the church just is says something about God to the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, so similarly, who do the crowd <clears throat> say that I am? Now, obviously, the disciples were kind of examples of, of who these people following Jesus were. So they kind of, the way that they lived their lives, the things that they they said, the things they did, um, all said something and pointed people to, to Jesus, hopefully. Mm. And I think it's a reminder that still today, um, who do the crowd say Jesus is? will be partly informed by the way that the church behaves and the way that we as Christians live our lives individually, but also together. Um, and I think that's a helpful reminder sometimes mm. when we think about how we behave as Christians, but also as church. Absolutely. And I think it's a really difficult balance as well, because as people, maybe on the inside, we recognise the importance of, of not placing too much mm. on church, mm. on individuals mm. and, and not placing our faith there but placing it in god but actually to people outside that distinction yeah. is very different as you say yeah. and so it is a a really important thing to think because so often we intentionally overlook that and say but well the minister isn't isn't jesus the, the, the mm. stewards mm. aren't jesus the church as a whole isn't <clears throat> jesus so so it doesn't matter for us but actually as you say that and i think that's where thinking of life as witness yeah. is a really yeah. helpful phrase because that that idea of witness is, is showing something yeah. telling something yeah and who we are and who the church is should say something about who god is in the way that we live and that we be together mm. so actually when when we do behave in ways that that aren't kind that aren't gracious that are, that are out of order and, and not appropriate remembering what does that say about god mm. if that makes sense absolutely yeah so, so I get really concerned when when churches argue publicly with each other, and and you've got a room, and and people are going at each other, and I think, gosh, what what must people in this room think that that God's about actually when we can't even get on, mm. um, or when or when the church says or does something, and and it kind of gets out there in the community, and it's like, oh gosh, they now think that we think that and <laughs> we say that, and yeah, just the, almost damage control almost, Absolutely. you know, but yeah, yeah. but just that sense where actually our lives should point people to God and say something about who God is in the way that we live and mm. we're called to be. And I think that links back to Christine's <clears throat> choice of words, isn't it, about role model? Yeah. And so often we see Jesus say things like, no one has ever seen the Father, but if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm. And in some ways, actually, we almost need to follow that through to its next yeah. step. And some people have never seen Jesus, but if they've seen us, they've seen something of Jesus hopefully hopefully yeah. as you say but they've seen sometimes certain, you might wish they didn't they've but... certainly seen something they've seen something of what they might think yeah, yeah. Jesus is then like um and and if we say we are we are Christian we're claiming that name of Christ and we're claiming to want to follow Christ's example mm -hmm. and and so that does require a certain way of living and again that's not a, a statement of so therefore you must always be perfect no, and if you are, no. aren't perfect you fail but actually, sometimes when we do fall out, we can also maybe think, well, perhaps we need to be a little bit public about mm. making up as well, mm. rather than just doing that behind the scenes or just brushing it under the carpet and pretending it never happened. Mm. But actually saying, do you know what? 
we did get things wrong. We are only human, but we also want to model what forgiveness looks like, what Absolutely. grace looks like, what yeah. compassion yeah. looks like. Um, so we've had a few more thoughts, which is brilliant. Uh, we've had my protector, mm. um, always my rock through life's challenges. Love that. Um, Joe says he is the one constant in my life, despite how I feel and what happens to me. Mm. I love that. And of course, Lola is that too. Um, <laughs> Not the year of sex no. with dogs or anything. <laughs> um, Ali says, I think I can say it better. Ali, you already said it great, but um, Christ informs the way in which I live my life in this world. Um, he illuminates. I, mm. I really love that. Um, that choice yeah. of word illuminates as well. And yeah, not thinking about nice that word. light. Mm. Um, on Sunday, when when we had a, we were thinking about stories in the joint service, and had a couple of people sharing theirs. We also had the reading of salt and light, mm. and don't hide mm. your light under a bowl kind of thing. And and that again, we we talk about that balance between Christ being the light of the world, but Jesus also tells us we are the light of the world. And again, it links back yeah. into that idea of showing the light of God through who we are and how we live and what we do. Um, and so seeing, as Ali says, how Christ illuminates the world around us and shows us where to go and who to be. It's then reminding us that actually by doing that, we are then being that light and sharing that light with others and um, that they might not see. otherwise. Mm, mm. Brilliant. Well, thank you to all those who have shared in the comments. Mm. Uh, very helpful. Keep them coming as well. If you yeah. are one of those people who maybe needs a little bit more time to think about mm. what exactly you might say, what words you might use, and um, that's absolutely fine, of course. But do send us a message to, yeah, or add, add the, the comments, comments later. Yeah. Um, what you, who do you say Jesus is? Mm. Because it is such an important question. And, and again, it comes back to that thing we've said so many times. And one of the great things about our faith is that all of these different perspectives might see and name Jesus slightly differently. And they all show us something different about the vastness of who God is. Mm, and mm. that's one of the most amazing gifts for me. Mm. Perfect. Um, so we're going to pray together. Um, we've got a prayer list here with just a couple of names on that we, we know have needed to be on this week. Uh, but obviously we weren't here on Monday, so it's a very uh, fresh list. So if you'd like to add any names, pop them in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep an eye out. Uh, but maybe today, I know it's not Thankfulness Friday, but you might want to... Uh, write a, a sentence or two thanking God for being uh, your saviour, your friend, your light, your rock, your comfort mm. and constant, all of those different things that we've named this morning. Um, so maybe you'd like to write a sentence or two about that in the comments, um, as well as share with us any names you'd like on the prayer list. So let's pause and let's pray together. Then. Lord God, we thank you for all you are and all that you have done. We thank you that all of these names that we have said for you, all of these descriptions about who you are, point us to something of your majesty and your grace. And yet still, there is so much more. Even as we think about all the words we would use, all the superlatives, all the amazing images of God. You are still ever greater. But Lord, we thank you for those things at the centre of our faith. The promises of God with us. The promises of Jesus to be our friend. Our rock our redeemer, our protector. And Lord, as we think about all of those things that Jesus is to us, we think about that example he laid before us, showing us how to live, how to be. And we pray that we would be able to follow something of that example. We lift up to you, your church, online in our local communities and across the world. We thank you for the many varied and different ways in which we seek to show the world Christ. And pray that all of your church 
may shine your light into the world around. It may show the world the God of love and power, the God of grace and justice, the God of hope and salvation. That through us the world may see you and may come to trust in Jesus and answer that question for themselves. <clears throat> and so, Lord, we pray for those events and gatherings all across the weekend that will be happening in the UK. For communities who will gather together to celebrate, to remember with joy, to look at the past, but also look to the future. But we pray too, Lord, for those families, those people in our communities who will hide in their homes this weekend who will struggle to get involved with the celebrations and the joy. We pray for those who are struggling with the rising cost of living, for people who lose sleep worrying about how they'll feed their children, for people who are reliant on food banks, on charity support, for people who are unsure about how they're going to pay their bills moving forward. For these people, we pray. We pray desperately for your justice, for an outpouring of your compassion and your love. And Lord, as our communities pull together to celebrate this jubilee, we pray that we also pray together to support these families and people in our community. For people who are desperate and struggling, losing all sense of hope and of light. Stir us into action, Lord, and encourage us to speak out for justice, for fairness. And as we've mentioned Jesus Christ is our friend and our saviour this morning. We pray for those people who are sad and lonely, stressed and worried and depressed. For people who feel they have no one to turn to, no sense of support or worth. We pray that they will know Christ is with them. That with Jesus they always have a friend and they always have a home. And finally, Lord, we pray for those people on our hearts and minds this morning, for people we hold in our thoughts and in our hearts. We pray for Peter and Angela, for Doreen and her family, for Holly, David, James, Donna, for Melanie, for Anne, Louise, Deborah, Alan, Mari, for Pam, Catherine and Grace. For Dorothy, Dave, Christine, for Sandra and her family, for Stella, and for Caitlin. Lord, may these people know the strength of your Holy Spirit and the power of your love today. Amen. Amen. Christ goes with us and we face the day ahead. Christ behind us, Christ beside us, Christ to our left, Christ to our right. Christ in the hearts of those we meet, Christ in our hearts today and every day. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you. May you learn more of God's never-ending passionate love for you 
today and every day. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and everyone we love and pray for. Amen. Amen.